measures, one of the things that they talk about is if the air pressure drops in the, the cabin of the airplane, that the oxygen mask will fall from the compartment above your head. And they always say, administer the oxygen to yourself first before helping others around you. And the reason that is, is because you're no good to anybody else around you if you don't have the oxygen that you need. So I think it's a lot like cancer treatment too. You need to make sure that you give yourself that rest that you need so that you can be good for the others around you. It's not a sign of weakness if you need to lay down and take a nap in the middle of the day. And this isn't going to be forever. It's just while you're actively going through treatment. Eventually, a lot of that fatigue will go away. But right now, if your body needs rest to heal, then that's what you need to give it. You need to give it the rest that it needs to make sure that it can take care of yourself. And the, the better that you take care of you, the faster you'll get through this and the better you'll be out on the other side when you're finished with your treatment. Tip number seven, keep moving. You wanna make sure that you do a little exercise every day. Exercise can do so much for you and for your mood, and it's just a good general health practice as a rule. Now, you need to make sure that you consult with your physician first before you do any exercise. If you are an aerobic instructor or a bar instructor and that's what you do, you need to make sure that you check with your doctor to make sure that it's okay for you to do that amount of rigorous exercise. We had a gal that we did a makeover on and she was a volleyball coach, uh, always very fit, had a double mastectomy. Uh, I believe that it was done outpatient, went home and rested. And the next day she went for a two mile walk. Now, I know that that may not be typical for everybody, but the fact that, and she healed, she drank her water and she exercised. I can say that those were the two things that I know for sure that she did. And she came through her surgery and her recovery beautifully. So I know that moving around, whatever that looks like, will be good for you. But just do something. Even if you can only do five minutes at a time, and that's what you do is you just set a timer and you just go a little five minute walk from your front door to your mailbox and then back again. But you do that six times a day, you can get at least 30 minutes of exercise in. So just talk to the doctor, find out what you can do, but do some sort of um, fitness classes now or do, do some sort of fitness. However, there are fitness classes that are actually designed for men and women that are battling cancer. And some of those classes are designed for while you're going in treatment. So if you can find a fitness class, they understand that you may have ports. They understand the fatigue that comes along with the cancer treatment. They understand how far to push yourself or it, they can do gentle exercise, but it's very effective, even if it's toning or, you know, light weight lifting. So see if you've got anything in your area. I know that um, the Live Strong program is very well known through the Y community, and they do a great job letting people um, just, it, it, it just cures you, cures not the right word, but it treats the body as a whole, right? It's holistic. So it's not only what the, the treatment does for the cancer, but it's also treating your body so that you can better fight the cancer. So look up classes that you may find, fitness classes that are divine, designed for anyone battling cancer. Number eight, just look at the next thing. Don't overwhelm yourself with the big picture. So when I got my cancer diagnosis, it was a little overwhelming and it was a little bite, a little bit to bite off as I never thought that that was something that, that I would ever have to go through. I spent my whole entire life dedicated to helping women battling cancer, never thinking that I would ever be one of those women that were battling cancer. And so when I had to go into my oncologist office, I noticed that he is an Ironman competitor and in his office are pictures and medals that he's won of all of his Ironman races. And I, I after we got done consulting and, and talking about my treatment or what my next step was, I asked him about the Ironman. Now, in case you don't know the Ironman, um, his Ironman, when he competes, it takes him 17 hours to complete an Ironman. Um, it's a swimming I know that you run 26 miles and I can't remember, I don't know how long you swim. I know it's a full marathon that you compete in and I can't remember how many of um, 
the biking. I, it might be right around 100 miles to bike, but don't quote me on that. I, I, I don't have. I didn't put all of that in my notes, but I know that it's it's a very long, grueling day. But 17 hours, 17 hours that you are just competing. And so I asked him a question because I feel like so many times, like cancer journeys are like running an Ironman. It's it's this huge, gigantic undertaking that you're looking at. And so I asked him, I said, you know, how, when you're going through an Ironman, what is it that you think about? You know, how do you get yourself through this? And he said, I set small goals for my goals for myself. And I just look at the next step. So he said, when I'm swimming, I'm only thinking about swimming. I'm not thinking about biking. And when I'm biking, I'm not thinking about running. I'm only thinking about that next thing that's in front of me. So Think of your cancer journey that same way is you just want to make sure that you're only thinking about the next thing, just the next chemo, just the next radiation. Don't think about what six months from now will look like, but think about what it's going to look like when you're done with treatment, when you can, when you've gotten all of those steps, visualize what it's going to look like when you cross that finish line. Number 10, practice gratitude. This is such a huge thing. You know, you can't be fearful and grateful at the same time. And that's, per my friend, Anthony Robbins. So I want you to make a list of all of the things in your life that you have to be grateful for. I end my day every day of making a list of gratitude, things that, that I'm grateful for on a daily basis. That's how I end my day. You know, it's easy to focus on all of the things that I don't have as opposed to all the things that I do have. So I need to remind myself every day of all of the things that I have to be grateful for. So start and end your day with a with a gratitude list and really get in the habit of being grateful for all of the good things that in your that are in your life in spite of all of the things that aren't. Number 11, take action, don't react. You know, this is something that I've had to practice myself and I have a tendency to react as opposed to take to take action. Take the time that you need to digest any new information and then formulate a plan before you react to some surprise information, right? So just you're going to be you're going to be hit with a bunch of information. So just make sure that you take time to just digest everything before you actually react to what you're processing. Process it all the way through and then take action. And the last one, which I think the most important is make sure that you see your diagnosis for what it is and not worse than it is. You know, are you a glass half empty or a glass half full person? Just see it for a glass of water. Don't see it worse than what it is. Cancer treatment has come so far and the survival rate now is so much higher than what it was 10 years ago. Just see it for what it is. Right now it's cancer. You're going through treatment. You're going to beat it. You're going to be on the other side of it. And then you're done. Just make sure that you see it for what it is and not worse than that is. Well, we're almost out of time today. So I just wanted to say thank you for joining me. But I want you to invite you to visit our website where we have a ton of free resources and some great information. And one of the free downloads that we have is the chapter six of our book, which talks all about hair loss and how to care for your wig and your scarf tying techniques. So go to www.hellogorgeous.org, visit our website, go to the free resources page, download that chapter of the book. Um, and any other, there's a bunch of videos that are there. It's um, how to take care of your scalp. There's some scarf tying techniques. There's all kinds of things underneath this, um, the free resources page. But I also want to let you know, look, just reach out to me if you have any questions or comments. Um, if you if you have something, questions that you want to know about beauty and cancer. Again, if you've got some tips that you can share that helped you as you went through your cancer treatment, I would love to hear those. So reach out to me at Kay Becker at hellogorgeous.org. Also, I want to invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and we have an awesome mobile app. So go to your app store and look for Hello Gorgeous and download our mobile app. Thank you for joining me today on Hello Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration. I'm your host, Kim Becker. And until next time, stay gorgeous.